I have written on top of my paper tonight something which is a little bit unusual. When I give a Shabbos Haggadah Drasha, yes, this is being recorded. When I give a Shabbos Haggadah Drasha, I mark on my paper at the top, Shabbos Haggadah Drasha for such and such year. So this would have been Shabbos Haggadah Drasha for Tufshin Pei. 5,780. But the way my paper reads is, this Shabbos HaGadol Drasha was given in advance of Shabbos HaGadol on Wednesday night, because we are all in our homes due to the coronavirus. And the Drasha is given by means of Zoom, either on the telephone or on the laptop, so when I look back at this in the future, it will put me back in the place where we stand tonight. Some of you received a message that I was giving a Shabbat Shuvah Drasha tonight. So I want you to know it's not that I have spent two weeks in my house and became disoriented and thought it was Shabbat Shuvah. I really do know that it's Shabbat Sagoto. But of course, the fact of the matter is, it's good for all of us to do tshuva. Secondly, Nisan is the month of miracles. And the miracle is, is that I learned how to do Zoom. So we are experiencing miracles in our time. And I was even forced to do it very quickly. So here we go. The title of the drasha this year is Whole and Broken, The Jewish People and the Matzos. Now life has times when we feel shalim, we feel whole, healthy, good. And life has times when we feel broken, shattered, not functioning properly. We're in the midst of one of those times for our people, Klai Yisrael, and for the whole world. This week's Parsha is Parsha Tzav. And it says in Parsha Tzav, Zos Torah Sa'ola. This is the Torah of the Ola, the Korban Ola, meaning to say these are the laws of the Korban Ola. The Maori Naim, Zechut Tzadik Livracha, Rabbi Nachum Nachum Torski, the first Chernobyl Rabbi, Talmud of the Baal Shem Tov, Talmud of the, Baal Shem, of the Magid Mezrich, and an ancestor of my Rebbe, Rabbi Shlomo Tversky, Zechut Sadat Yivracha. He writes in his Sefer, Zos Torah Sa'ola. The Torah is about being Ola, about being uplifted, raising ourselves into a closer relationship with Hashem. Zos Torah Sa'ola. The purpose of the Torah is for a Jew, a Yid, to elevate himself, elevate herself into a higher place, a place of closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. One of the ways that we do this is by listening to the Torah and the mitzvahs. Now, what do we mean by listening? One thing listening means is to pay attention to it, adhere to it, obey the Torah and the mitzvahs, which we all must do. There's another concept brought down in Svarim HaKadoshim, which means that one should listen to the mitzvah, meaning listen to the message of the mitzvah. Tishma'u el mitzvosai. What's that mitzvah coming to teach us? What is that mitzvah coming to tell us? Take a look at it, see it, hear it, understand it. The mitzvah is talking to us. It's teaching us a lesson in life. Now, based on that premise, I'd like to talk about our matzos on Pesach night and a certain theme with these matzos, which really is present elsewhere as well. On Pesach night, we start off with three matzos. And then comes to Yachatz, we break the middle matzah. 
and we have two whole matzahs, and in between them is a broken matzah. When we break that matzah, we put the bigger piece away for the afikomen. The smaller piece we keep in between the two matzahs. Now, what do we have there? If we look at it, we have something broken. That's the prusa. And we have something whole on both sides. I'd like to advance that theme a little bit and say, whenever we're in a place in life which seems like a broken place, a difficult place, a place of hardship, we always have to know that we are surrounded by Hashem Shlemus, by Hashem's perfection on both sides of us. Now with that in mind, let's take a look at a halacha. Very interesting halacha. It's in Simon Tuf Ayin Hay in the Torah in the Shulchan Aruch, and I'm going to read it from the Aruch HaShulchan. So there is a question here. It's a halachic dispute. We have these two whole matzahs, and we have the broken matzah in the middle. We're going to say, have two brachas, hamotzi lechem in ha'aretz, and alachilas matzah. Which matzos are connected to which bracha? This is a mach locus, and here it is. This is right out of the Uruch HaShulchan. The Hine, the Tur Hevi Shnei Deyas. The Tur brings two opinions. Sheyesh Sovrim Shal Hashlema Mabore Chamotzi Kamo Bechol HaYantif Vala Prusa Alachilas Matzah. One opinion is, when we say Hamotzi Lechem Yino Oretz, it's going on the two whole matzahs. Because Pesach is yamtif, and like any yamtif, you have to have lechem mishnah, like you do on Shabbos, two whole breads, or in this case, two whole matzahs. So the brach of hamotzi is going on the two shlemas. And the brach of alachilas matzah is going on the prusa, on the middle broken matzah. Alachilas matzah, on the eating of matzah, which must be lechem oni, bread of oppression bread of hardship. It's broken. So that makes sense. Alachilas matzah is going on the middle broken one. That's one opinion. The yesh sovrim. However, there are those who say, there's Rishonim who say, lehepech, it's the other way around. The hamotzi al haprusa. That hamotzi lecha mina oretz is going on the broken matzah. Shezehu hashinui v'pesach. Because it's Pesach, we do things differently. So normally, hamotzi goes on the two whole ones. Tonight, on Pesach night, it goes on the broken one. And al achilas matzah goes on the shlemos, on the whole one. That's the halachic dispute. Now, the halach is like the first opinion. That hamotzi goes on the two whole ones, and al achilas matzah goes on the broken one. That's the halacha. However, Baruch HaShulchan writes that on account of kavod for the day of Hashnia, we want to show respect for the second opinion. So therefore, what do we do? And this is what he says, V'lochein, K'day let says kol hadeos, in order to fulfill both opinions, Yoch HaShneim, you lift up all the matzahs together, as we're all familiar with, you have two whole matzahs in your hand and one broken matzah in between. You lift them all up together. As the Beis Yosef writes, The broken one between the two whole ones. Then while holding them in your hand, you say hamotzi and you say alachilas matzah. You break off a piece of the whole one, the top one. You break off a piece of the middle one, and you eat the matzos. So whichever one is correct, you've done both opinions. If hamotzi is meant to go on the two whole ones, it did. If it's meant to go on the half one, it did. If alachilas matzah is meant to go on the broken one, it did. If it's meant to go on the two whole ones, it did. You got them both in your hand. You say the brachas all together. That's how we fulfill both opinions. The Orcha Shulchan, just by the way, doesn't mention anything about dropping the bottom matzah, the whole one, which is something the Mishnah says to do. Just wanted to 
point that out. So what do we have here in this halacha? It seems to me that we're given a very important lesson in this halacha. And the lesson is this. We are not always sure what is complete and what is incomplete. When faced with something sholem and something shavur, something whole and something broken, we feel like we can identify this is whole and this is broken. But you know what? It's not that simple. Sometimes what we think is a broken situation is really a whole situation. It's really shalom. Something that which we think is whole isn't broken. And it's broken and it's in need of repair. We're living right now in difficult times. A pandemic across the entire world. We could say the world is broken. The economy coming to a halt. Thousands of people dying. Even more thousands of people sick. People losing jobs out of work. The broken world. And if we focus into our Jewish world, it also looks broken. We're not in our shuls. We're not in our Bata Midrashos. We're not in our yeshivas. We're not in our schools. It seems like a broken world. So what do we do in a broken world? We really dig deeply inside of ourselves for our amuna, our faith in Hashem, our trust in Hashem. We continue to do all of our mitzvot, never relinquishing in any way. But now we have to do them in a different way. And as I mentioned before a few times, we're bringing our Torah and our tefillah into our homes. And it seems very much to me that Hashem wants us to bring our Torah and our tefillah into our homes with our very immediate family and to make that the focus. We can join together on Zoom, on teleconferencing like we are right now. And that's a good thing. It brings us togetherness, achdus, a lot of shiurim that are being taught that way. But remember, when Yom Tif comes, there's no Zoom, there's no WhatsApp, there's no texting. It's Yom Tif. When Pesach comes into your home, my wife and I will be by ourselves all through Pesach. We have lots kid and horror of children and grandchildren in town. They will not be in our house this Pesach. Each one will be in their own respective home. The Rebetzin and I will be here by ourselves. But you know what? It's Pesach. And Pesach has to be celebrated like Pesach. Zaman Cheiruseinu. We're not going to change that phrase. It's still Zaman Cheiruseinu. Make the best of it. Make the most of it. This is a situation Hashem has put us into. Let's make the very best of it. And you know what? Maybe in a certain way, it's not broken. And here's what I mean. I received a story today from one of my daughters-in-law. And later on today, by somebody else sent me this story. Maybe you saw it too. It's an absolutely beautiful, moving story, and I'm going to read it to you. It goes as follows. It's written by a young woman. She says, my Zeta's name was Moshe ben Amram. That's right, the same exact name as Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe ben Amram. Just as Moshe Rabbeinu was known for his anivus, his humility, so too, this was a meter that so exemplified Zaidi. I want to share something that happened today, something that if today was a normal day, could never have happened. My Zaidi died. We were told that the funeral would be at 10 a.m. sharp. Don't be late or we will miss it. The funerals are very minimal. And quick, Mama Sheminyan, a capital to Hillam, and it's done. The Avelim came up to the Aron. They begged Mechila, forgiveness. 
they started the Tehillim. They got to almost the end when the funeral aide walked in and took a peek inside the Aron. It wasn't my grandfather. We had conducted a funeral over someone else. Everyone was shocked, horrified, dumbstruck. They sent the family out. I was in the car outside, so my sister came to tell me what had happened. About 20 minutes later, they started all over again, this time with Zadie present. I have to admit, I was so upset that this had happened to my Zadie, the man who was loved by all, who deserved so much kavod, who had to die alone due to a pandemic who had to have the embarrassment of a funeral, who couldn't have a befitting burial or shiva. This was the final insult. I was so upset. I started to laugh and cry simultaneously. I couldn't believe I was living in a time. There were so many bodies that they mixed them up. And then my mother called me and she says, you're not gonna believe this story. I told her, I already know about the mix-up. She said, no, you don't know the rest. The body that was brought in, it was a mace mitzvah. In Jewish law, a mace mitzvah is a person that is found dead or for whatever reason does not have any family to bury him. It's the obligation of the community to bury him in a dignified way. He was dead alone in his apartment for four days before he was found. This man had no one there, no one to be sad, no one to say to heal him or to give him a minion. Through a weird twist of fate, he ended up with a beautiful, beautiful funeral, a minion, something under normal circumstances he would not have had. Then I remembered my Zadie. My Zadie always ran away from honor. He always hid from honor. He never wanted the spotlight. My cousin posted that whenever we had a chasa in our family and we wanted to give Zadie a bracha under the chuppah, we'd have to send people to follow him to the chuppah to make sure that he got there to give him a bracha because otherwise he wouldn't be there. That was part of us ensuring he got what he deserved. Even then, he always thought there was someone greater than him who deserved the honor. We had to make sure that he got to the chuppah for the honor. Well, Zadie, as usual, got the last laugh. We couldn't chase him to the front of the funeral home. Even in death, he gave his kavod for someone else. This is the most Zadie-like thing to ever happen. A mace mitzvah got a funeral. I can just imagine the laugh in Zadie's eyes as he watched this. His chesed, his hachnasus orchim, knew no bounds. I knew in my heart, my Zadie did in death, what he always did in life. Instead of my horror of earlier today, I'm filled with pride. As Zadie's neshama continues to give, to give to others, even in death. May Hashem heal the world quickly, so no one suffers anymore. May we celebrate Smacha soon. I read the story. I was moved to tears when I read it, the first time, the second time, and now the third time as well. That situation looked very broken. It was the wrong person, but it was the right person. A broken situation was really whole because Hashem is the one running the world. And he made sure that that Mes Mitzvah had a funeral. And he made sure that a truly humble man who gave kavod to others all through his life continued to do that after he left this world. That which looks broken is not necessarily broken. It's just that we don't usually have the eyes to see it. So right now, pre-Shabbos Haggadah, 
Tufshin Pei, 5,780. Here we are in a world that looks very broken. But let us all know that in some ways it's not. That Hashem is leading this world just the way He wants to, toward Mashiach. And Mashiach is whole and shalim. This is one more step on the way. I'd like to share a minha with you today. And on this note, to close my talk, it's a very beautiful minhag that I saw in the sefer called Minhag Yisrael Torah. And it's from the Kafachaim. The Kafachaim was a very great Sephardic posik with a massive work on halacha called the Kafachaim. And he writes as follows. It's talking about, once again, our broken matzah. Holach anya. This bread of depression, this bread of hardship. Ha lach ma'anya. So we break the middle matzah, as we said, and we have the two whole matzahs around it. And he said what they used to do, and we'll be familiar with the first part of this, is they would wrap the matzah in a cloth, put it on the shoulders of the children, and they would walk around with it. Va'achar kach, but then afterwards, the child who had the matzah would go knock on the door. He'd knock on the front door, and the people inside would say to the child, who are you? He would say, I'm a Jew. And then they would say to him, where do you come from? Va'omer mimitzrayim, the child would say, I came from Egypt. And then we would say, where are you going? Va'omer liyerushalayim, and he would say, I'm going to Yerushalayim. This is the minhug that the Kafachayim writes that they observed in their community. But isn't that minhug life? Who are you? We would all answer that question. Yisroelani, Yehudiani, I'm a Jew. And we'd answer that proudly. Broken or whole, we'd answer that proudly. And then we'd say, where are you coming from? Coming from Mitzrayim. Every single day, we have Mitzrayim in our lives. We have to mention it by day and by night. And one time a year on Pesach, it becomes the grand theme. Yitzias Mitzrayim, Me'avdus L'cherus. Every day, where are we coming from? We're coming from Mitzrayim, from the hardships of life. But where are we going? We're going to Yerushalayim. We're always going to Yerushalayim. That's our direction. That's our goal. And because of that, that middle broken matzah is surrounded by two whole matzos. And we have it in another time of year as well. On Rosh Hashanah, we blow the shofar. And there's a tekiya in front, which is a whole sound, and a tekiya in back, which is a whole sound, and in the middle is a trua, or a shvorim trua, or a shvorim, all different versions of a trua. What's the middle sound broken? just like the matzah is broken in the middle. What are the two outside surrounding sounds? Tekiya, whole. We find this theme in Yiddishkeit in different places. When we're coming from Yerushalayim, we know that we're broken. Sorry, when we're coming from Yisrael, we know that we're broken. We're going to Yerushalayim, we know we're always headed toward Shlemus. And that's why Jewish people always have hope. We have it in our heart. We have it in our soul. It runs through our blood. We saw a few weeks ago that the luchos rishonos were broken, the first tablets. The luchos shnios were not broken. And the chachamim say an amazing thing, also about whole and broken. Shivrei luchos hayu 
the broken tablets were also kept in the Aron with the whole luchos. Unusual. Why would we keep the broken luchos along with the whole luchos? We studied about this in the Orgadayahu. I believe the question could be answered as follows. The reason we keep the broken luchos there, because they were the luchos rishonos. They were the first luchos. They were the level B'nai Yisrael was on at Har Sinai, which was equivalent to the level of the Jewish people before the Chet of Adam and Chava. Those broken luchos are still within reach. That's why they're in the Aram. That level has not left the Jewish people. It's inside of us. And we always have to know when we're in the midst of something broken, it's going to get healed. It's going to go back to that higher place, or I should say, forward to that higher place. The luchos, the matzos, the shofar, the theme of broken and whole. Where are we all going? We're going to Yerushalayim, Yerak Hodesh. May it be for all of us this year, truly, Bishlemus, the Emes, who believe Shalim. May we be Zoha to a beautiful Pesach, the Pesach of Mashiach. May we be Zoha to Rafua Shalema, Lacholi Amecha. May Hashem heal all those who are broken. And may we truly be able to taste the taste of Geula this year. Wishing to everybody a Chag Kosher V'Sameach. I'm just going to, for a moment, so we can say Erev Tov and Chag Kosher V'Sameach. I'm going to unmute us and then turn it off. We don't want pandemonium, but we definitely want to say goodnight. Everybody. Good night. Good night. Hi. 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 I'm seeing something very beautiful on my screen here in front of me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. 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 I'm going to go through the pictures one more time. We'll say one more time. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good job. Happy Shabbos. To everybody. Good job. All good things. No, I'm sorry. Good night. Good night. Good night.